Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to calculate load history deflections for an elevated slab in RAM concept. For this particular video, we're going to assume that we've already performed the load history calculation and we're starting to review our results. Specifically, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the tables that are available for each load history step. To access that information, let's go to the Layers menu bar item, go to Load History Deflections, and then select any of your Load History Deflection folders. Now what we're going to notice is we're going to notice that there are tables available for each Load History step, and we're going to go ahead and say that we're interested in the Strip Load History Analysis Table. Now RAM Concepts Load History Deflection Analysis is a rigorous approach that is based on detailed time-dependent curvature calculations on cross-sections that includes different behaviors that will influence your long-term concrete deflections. This would include material nonlinearity, early strength concrete, cracking, tension stiffening, creep, shrinkage, internal restraint to shrinkage, and external restraint to shrinkage, along with load history. Now each load history deflection folder provides you additional data in this table format if you would like to review the effects that are influencing long-term concrete deflections for each load history step. For this particular model, we went ahead and generated design strips and the design strips will be reported with the results at each load history step in these tables. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the few of the fields that you might be interested in. So to understand the cracking behavior of the slab, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the field for FA over FCR. This is the ratio of the calculated axial stress at the extreme fiber of the section over the cracking stress. The calculated axial stress is the result of applied loads and induces strains, including the shrinkage restraint percent. A section is considered cracked when the ratio is greater than or equal to 1.0. In addition to that, we can also take a look at our modulus of rupture for each design strip. Now this will be the calculated modulus of rupture, which is normally the cracking stress of the section. The tabulated value includes adjustments to account for the reduced concrete strength at early ages or less than 28 days. Now you're gonna notice that this calculation is based on your selected design code. Now, in addition to this table, while you're reviewing your cracking information, we also do provide some of this information in plot format. And specifically, we do have some plots at each load history step to show your FA over FCR ratio. So here what we can do is we can go ahead and take a look at those plots for each load history step. Now from these plots, you'll be able to see how they correspond with your legend. And remember that anything above 1.0 would be considered cracked. And we're taking a look at the top plan. Now these plans will give you more information about when exactly each surface of the slab is cracking at the specific load history step. So you can take a look at each load history step and see as the color contours change. Let's go ahead and return back to our table and let's review how the internal shrinkage restraint is influencing the deflection. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the field for mean curvature. This is the average curvature interpolated between the uncracked transformed curvature and the cracked curvature using the tension stiffening model. 
This curvature includes the effects of external restraint to shrinkage. The element stiffness reduction is determined by the ratio of the mean curvature to the gross curvature. We're also going to take a look at the mean shrinkage warped curvature. This is the average curvature due to only internal restraining to shrinkage interpolated between the uncracked transformed and cracked shrinkage warping curvatures. This ratio can be compared with the mean curvature to better understand the influence of internal restraint to shrinkage on the load history deflection calculation. Now from this table, we can also review how the external shrinkage restraint is influencing the deflection. We're gonna to return to taking a look at the FA over FCR ratio. This is the ratio of the calculated axial stress at the extreme fiber of the section over the cracking stress. The calculated axial stress is the result of applied loads and induced strain, including the shrinkage restraint percent. Now we can also take a look at the unrestrained ratio. This is the ratio of the calculated axial stress at the extreme fiber of the section over the calculated calculating stress with the effects of the shrinkage restraint percentage removed. This ratio can be compared with the FA over FCR ratios to better understand the influence of external restraint to shrinkage on the load history deflection calculations. Finally, we're going to also review the creep effects in the slab. So from this table, we can see the incremental creepage coefficient over the duration of a given load history step, which is based upon a loading applied at the initial load application time. This coefficient excludes the creep effects from any previous load history step. The coefficient includes adjustments to account for time of loading for creep models that calculate creep based on the modulus of elasticity at the time of loading instead of the 28-day modulus of elasticity. And we can also take a look at the cumulative creep coefficient over the total age of a given load history step based upon a loading applied at the initial load application time. This coefficient includes the creep effects from all previous load history steps. The coefficient includes adjustments to account for time of loading for creep models that calculate creep based on the modulus of elasticity at the time of loading instead of the 28-day modulus of elasticity. Now please keep in mind that these tables are available for each of your load history steps that were included in your load history criteria. At this point, this concludes our process for reviewing the tables that are available after a load history deflection calculation is performed. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.